we explore how such abilities manifest, as well as learn that ex extraterrestrials can visit in a multi-dimensional way to perform healing procedures. A young woman from Perth heals with both sound and energy, and a computer scientist from Israel works with extraterrestrials in what he believes is a multi-dimensional hospital. There is no doubt that the results are often quite tangible and healing takes place. Make up your own mind as you hear individuals who have honoured their truth and are courageous enough to tell their story. Not only to own their contact, but how contact has changed them and their views of reality forever. Hi, my name is Rochelle Delia. I've been consciously aware of my extraterrestrial contact now for eight years, but I've been having contact my whole life. My experiences with extraterrestrials have been quite varied. Um, I have gone through a process now over the past eight years, and I've come through a lot of the traumatic aspect. And now my experiences have brought me many rewards, um, particularly in the way of healing abilities and I myself have changed in a positive way through them. I have a lot of help with healing work. I speak in many different ET languages and I also write in alien script. These abilities all come quite naturally to me. How were you aware of the fact that you could heal and what is your understanding of the healing that you do? The healing work that I do now has changed and evolved over the years. It first began when I had an experience. I was drawn to go outside of my house at about 3 a.m. and I was looking up at the moon and when I was looking at the moon I felt quite strange and felt to close my eyes. When I closed my eyes I felt lots of different sensations. I felt uh, cool air being blown on my eyes and on my fingertips. I had pinpricking sensations all over my face. I had the sensation of wind circling my head and I could feel it clipping my nose as it went past. I also had sound waves that were going into my ear from a great distance and these repeated over and over. Um, I had tingling sensations all around my head as well. This process went on for some time and when it stopped I felt I could open my eyes again and I felt quite heavy in my body as if there was someone else in my body. I was then drawn to go inside and lie down on my bed and when I lay down on my bed I actually started to perform uh, some sort of surgery on myself. I'd never done this before. I'd never had any experience of healing work either done on myself or performing it on others before. So uh, I had my hands away from my body and the healing involved minute movements of my fingertips. Um, I was using my fingers, or they felt as though they were pulling what you imagine to be puppet strings. Um, that's what it felt like and I would have a series of consecutive movements and I could feel uh, the work going right through and penetrating through my organs. I would then hold my fingers uh, sort of locking a position in place and then I would use a series of very specific movements of the muscles in my eyes which would then unlock or release this pressure. I had to actually move my body into different positions to access all the parts of my body. As the years went by the healing work that I was doing actually changed, so I was using my whole hand instead of just my fingers. I wasn't actually using my eyes as much consciously and uh, then later on uh, I started using toning. I was in intuitively guided to use toning and then later language came through. After the languages came through, then I started using a combination of toning and language and songs came through. Um, I can best explain these as being um, songs 
that are used for the soul to recognize. Um, souls may remember these songs from other planets, other lifetimes, and they help the individual to feel comfortable um, for the particular healing work to take place. Um, really they're used as you might use a lullaby to help a baby go to sleep, it helps them to relax, or a chant is used to switch off the mind and help one to go into an altered state. languages, blocks of information comes through and uh, to translate it into our tongue would take quite some time. Um, often you would need to fill a whole house with encyclopedias um, to actually translate a message that may be relayed in this tongue in a few seconds. Um, a sample that is uh, close in vibration to ours may is this one yomi ratus embra kisendra wali aven ojindra this means that we are reaching a stage in our evolution where chance is no longer as we imagine it everything has a place and we are now drawing all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together and we are recognizing our part, our part as a conscious chooser within this structure. Granda, granda, ira, granda, gro, ita, oi, amera, amera, oik, ira, i, yanda. I explain them most simply as uh, soul languages. It is really like my soul speaking to another's soul and actually bypassing the conscious mind. This is why I don't often translate the languages because I feel when you translate you actually are losing the integrity of the message. Often the ones that are even more complex we cannot hear normally with human hearing but we can feel them. When I work as a healer, I switch from how I normally operate as my human self to my ET self. It might sound a bit strange, but I have been given information about my dual consciousness. I can best describe this as coming into this vehicle, having both ET and human characteristics. My human self is very sensitive, very emotional. My ET self is very clinical, very practical, very matter of fact. The healing work that I do, I'm operating in ET. It is really like operating as a surgeon. I see very clearly in the energy field the problem and I fix it. There's no room for emotional involvement. My personality uh, steps aside and I hear where the energy field is out of tune. I don't hear in the way that we normally hear. I hear with another sense, if you like, that we don't normally use. And there'll be certain places in the energy field that will be out of tune and I work to retune, almost like you would use a tuning fork to hear when a musical note is in tune. How I do this is by bringing in the frequencies that the person most needs at the time. I do this through sound and colour and quite often symbols come through with the sounds that I translate as well. Uh, the symbols are multi-dimensional in nature, they're not like normal shapes that we are used to. I work with a team usually of about six to ten different beings that help me and my team actually changes as I do. 
Usually I don't like to name the beings that I work with or identify them. I think for me it's just important that I'm aware of their energy more than anything else. But they will give me a name if it helps me to feel comfortable and more familiar with them. The client usually will feel relaxed after a session. Usually they will feel more balanced. Quite often they will leave their body or I will I guess be aware that they leave their body during the session. They may be aware that they've fallen asleep um, but it's actually quite different and they usually leave at exactly the same time during the session. It's usually about half an hour into the session that they leave. This is so deeper work can take place without their conscious mind being involved. Can you tell us what you're writing? Sure. It's really like translating um, information that has been lost, information that was known by ancient civilizations. I'm not able to give you a more accurate description of this writing. My style is really like a shorthand, if you like. It's probably quite messy. <laughs> um, but within each character, again, like the languages, it's really like a block of information in itself. If you were able to um, get three-dimensional, well, depiction of each character, because that's how I see each one, that would be much more accurate. <laughs> With all the information that comes through, me, I'm aware of it being multifaceted. When I do healing work, I also will see coding in the air, in the energy field, and I may see this coding in either uh, numbers, like you may see uh, mathematical configurations, or I may see them as dots, or I may actually see them as portals. There are many different ways that you can view them, or you can see them as sound. It's the same with the writing too. And what are you feeling at the moment that you're doing it? What is the sense that you have? I feel very happy when I'm expressing in these ways, when I'm expressing through what people might call ET languages or ET writing. It feels much more natural for me than uh, many of the human forms of expression. I guess this has to do with my dual consciousness and the fact that for me it is really learning about being human rather than learning about being extraterrestrial. With the writing as well, what I actually enjoy doing is placing my hand over the script because you can feel the energy from each of the symbols. You can sometimes feel heat as well, but you can definitely feel the difference when you place your hand over the symbols and then place your hand away. You actually feel very drawn to the energy and you will actually also experience visual images if you're particularly in tune or psychic and you can travel through portals through each one as well. I'm very relaxed, very at ease. Like a lot of things have been taken off my shoulders. The beings that were working with me were wanting to um, demonstrate how the different areas in the body actually interact. So when I was placing my hands across and pointing out different sections of the body, um, this was for the audience as well as for you. It was just showing how each part of the body is not independent of any other area. They all work together and it's important that we recognize this, see the body as a whole. Um, there are particular um, titles that are given um, to each part of the body that are related with vibrations um, and by expressing the title or the name as you would say, um, it actually activates that area. Um, they also have links with different energies from planets and dimensions.